this is Patrice Washington from patricewashington.com where we chase purpose, not money. Now, before I get into how I found my purpose, I want to make sure I remind you to subscribe because right here each and every Tuesday, I release brand new content to help you redefine wealth in your life. So today I'm talking about how I found my purpose, which is one of the number one questions I get every day. And so here's what I'm really clear about. I truly believe in my heart of hearts that I was put here on earth to help you understand that becoming wealthy has 100% nothing to do with money. It has 100% everything to do with us and our mindsets towards money. And so my mission, my goal, my passion each and every day is to make sure that I produce content or that I go out into the world, period, and share things that'll help you live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. Now, you might be saying, though, how did you come up with all of that? Like, where did that come from? How did you know? And the answer is, it really took time. That is really nothing that I knew overnight. It really took time, but I want to take you through three of the main steps I took to find my purpose. The first one is I had to get really clear about what my gifts were. Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up thinking that I had no gifts or talents. I mean, I didn't know how to dance or sing or dribble the basketball particularly well. And I grew up in an environment that said that in order to have talent, you had to be able to do one of those things. And I couldn't. So for years, I took my gifts for granted. And it wasn't until I lost everything in the recession and I found a book called Coach Yourself to Success by Tulane Mediner. And one of the things that she asked you to do is go all the way back, dig really deep and look at the theme for your life. What are the things over the years that have always come naturally to you? Steve Harvey actually defines your gift as the thing that you do better than anyone else around you with the least amount of effort. And so when I looked at that, I looked at everything from what I used to love as a kid all the way up until my 20s. And the thing that I did better than anyone else around me, believe it or not, was talk. I always got in trouble for talking in school. Any elementary school teacher I've ever had will tell you. I got all A's and a bunch of UUs and the comments were always, she talks too much. And so that was the thing though that people always tried to take away from me. I was always told I talk too much, be quiet, shut up, you're a distraction, all those things. But the thing that I say now is I get paid to talk. I get paid to talk on television and radio and I enjoy even doing this with you right now. I enjoy doing my podcast. But when I look at what my gift was, it was always speaking. It was always encouraging other people. It was always showing hope to others. And so I want you to think about whether your gift is actually right under your nose. What is that thing that gives you the most energy? And what is that thing that you've always done, but maybe other people didn't validate it or recognize it the way that they should? Now, the second thing I had to do was assess my skill set. So sometimes we think about that in terms of just what our degree is in or what certifications we've had. And you might even look at what experiences you've picked up on different jobs, but don't limit that to just the jobs that you like or the jobs that you feel like are the real, your real job, as I hear from people sometimes. I've even had to look at what are the internships that I took in high school and college, or what are those volunteer opportunities that I've done in the past? Because nothing should go to waste. There is definitely something that you picked up at each and every one of those jobs. So we don't want to let it just go to waste and act as if it hasn't helped you become the person that you are today. You know, one job I hardly ever talk about is the fact that I worked at front desk during the graveyard shift at a major hotel in downtown Los Angeles. And it was one of those jobs where at midnight, I would have to tell people who had been traveling all day that we had no more room for them at the end. And that did not go well with business travelers. But I really learned to have tough skin and I learned how to be compassionate towards people and help them no matter what the circumstance was and really in the end, win them over. And when I think about all the training I got working in hospitality and how I relate to people now, even when I'm on book tours or out speaking at events, I see so much of that training in who I am today. And so it's really helped me build my purpose 
even though it wasn't an official job or the big job that we think about. And the third thing I had to think about is how do I marry those two so that I can offer value in the marketplace? Now, one of the first things that I did when I got really clear about what my gifts are and really took inventory of my skills is I looked for people who are already out there doing what I wanted to do. I really looked for people who could be an example, not that I wanted to mimic them, not that I wanted to recreate myself as them, but I always knew that if someone is already out there offering this service and getting paid for it, then why can't I do the same? And so when I was searching, some of the folks that I found were Dave Ramsey or Susie Orman, but I always knew that I had something different to offer. And so I also wanna encourage you on your pursuit to finding your purpose, that you don't get stuck in trying to pretend to be anyone else, but that you definitely just use those people as motivation because if they've done it, you can too. Now those three things really helped me get started, but that was not the end all be all, right? I still didn't know exactly what my purpose was. It just gave me the best start that I can have. It allowed me to take my next best step. And what stops a lot of you out there looking to uncover your purpose is that you wanna know the entire path. You wanna see how everything is gonna turn out. And the reality is 10 years ago, I didn't know that I would be here. All I knew is that I had some gifts, I had assessed my skills, and that there were people out there using the same types of gifts and skills to do something productive. And that's all I knew, but I'm so glad that I kept going. And here's the truth, your purpose can evolve. What I felt like was my purpose seven years ago is not what I call my purpose today. Because as you grow, as you continue, you're gonna pick up different gifts. You're gonna have new experiences. You're gonna be exposed to more people. And your job is to keep doing this exercise and tweaking and refining and redefining whatever that looks like for you. So now it's your turn. I wanna hear from you. Are you struggling to figure out what your purpose is? Are you gonna use any of these tips to help you figure it out? And if you know what your purpose is, I really want you to share. Share below in the comments because you sharing your purpose might really encourage someone else. And also tell us how you figured it out. Because remember, at patricewashington.com, we are building a community of women who want to grow together. That means you wanna live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. Want to learn more? Download the Redefining Wealth podcast now. There you'll get more insights on my six pillars of wealth and also hear inspiring interviews by some of the country's leading entrepreneurs, executives, authors, entertainers, and athletes on how they use these principles to fuel their finances and success.